hello to Ben and James. Welcome to TV Talent North's Room of Zoom, uh, the famous Room of Zoom. Um, it's lovely to have you here. Um, hello. I can, do you want to introduce you? Have you got cuppers, by the way? I asked you to bring a brew. Have you got one? Go on you first, Ben. I haven't actually. <gasps> I haven't actually. <laughs> I have. Oh. Rookie mistake. Look at that. That's, <laughs> Is, it's what, is that a Hogwarts cup? Yeah, which, which house? Hufflepuff. No, nah, that yeah. sounds about right. That's yeah. on my door. Sounds about right. It's, it's a coffee though, Katie, I'm afraid. Is that, does that get me some sort of mark? Well, memory? no, it's definitely coffee time. Tea yeah. first, then coffee for me, so. Same here, yeah. <laughs> um, so how are you both? Are you okay? Do you want to introduce yourselves? Tell me a little bit about yourselves. Uh, for those who don't know, Ben, do you want to start? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm Ben. I am Ben Sheldon. I am a series director. Uh, so I've just made, um, just currently just making it a hospital series up in the Northeast. Uh, and just before that, I'd, I was working with James uh, making Yorkshire Firefighters. Lovely. James? Uh, yeah, I'm the series, series producer. I work at Wise Owl Films, which is the production company who made um, Yorkshire Firefighters. And I've got a sort of background in like uh, fact, specialist factual science programs worked a lot for BBC Children's and um, Granada back in the day in the BBC current affairs unit um, and True North of course uh, for many years so um, yeah just sort of done the rounds in the north really over over, over time. Proper northern boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're here to talk about the brilliant new series Yorkshire Firefighters um, which is a four-part series for BBC Two um, made, like you said, by Wise Owl. Um, it's going out on Thursday. So is we're sort of, have we seen two already or? Uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've had two episodes and uh, two more to come. So yeah, yeah Thursdays at eight. And it, you can binge watch it on iPlayer as well, can't you? Yeah, I think, I, I'm not sure if the whole series is up yet, but they definitely drop them in straight after it goes out. So yeah. So I suppose let's start. I mean, I quite liked the. Um, I think you use it in the um, in the t in the sort of title sequence at the beginning. The the firefighter that says we, we never expected to live through a global pandemic, and I think it's quite a profound statement because you know effect this what we've all lived through has affected us all. Um, so I suppose you know in a way like you guys have been challenged with making making this series in in you know in difficult circumstances but do you want to tell me a little bit about um how it came about because i suppose it wouldn't have come about if it if it wasn't for covid would it, it was a bit of a covid baby wasn't it do you want to tell yeah, us yeah well I'll, I'll talk about the background and ben can pick up how we actually filmed it and in, in, with, with all of that and um, yeah i mean we um we were hunting around for ideas as most companies were in, in in the sort of the teeth of the pandemic when it was really like at its worst and commissioning had been scaled back um across the board really and and, and sort of more conventional ideas were were struggling to get off the ground and um access docs were still happening you know they were still making hospital and ambulance and, and other shows because obviously these people were still doing their jobs and the the public required needed you know the emergency services as much as ever so um the, 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 there's always been this thing you know cr cracking a fire serv series is hard and, and and commissioners are a bit re resistant to taking on um fire series because the, the, the sort of theory is that you don't get enough stories it's a bit a bit dull the access sometimes you know there's a lot of these factors so but but fortunately um we, we, we got a bit of interest from BBC England when we started talking to um, the, the team up there, who in Ashley and O'Connor's team, who, who are tasked with commissioning outside London and, and working with indies away, away from the M25. And um, we, we spoke to, uh, to them about, um, you know, sort of trying to get some access into a fire service. And, and they were quite amenable to the idea and said, well, look, if you can come up with a nice treatment and find the right service, the right characters, we, we'd take a look. So we got talking and we thought, well, you start on your doorstep, don't you? And, you know, right out the door of Wise Owl Films is Leeds Central Station. And so we, we sort of got talking to, to West Yorkshire and, you know, they were really up for it. They had a, um, a priority of themselves. You know, they wanted to show that they were changing as a service in terms of the diversity of their teams. They, they wanted to encourage female firefighters to join up. So it worked for them. And, and the BBC liked that editorial skew as well. So in terms of... It being a COVID commission, um, 
we, we, we sort of found out pretty early on, as long as our protocols could be adapted, that their job didn't change. And in a weird sort of way, it made it quite interesting for the viewers to see these people doing a normal job in a, in a, in a normal world, whereas we weren't. And, you know, Ben obviously was there on the ground, weren't you? Like sort of see, seeing it up, up firsthand. I mean, how much do you think COVID affected it for us? I mean, the, the, the thing for us is that the original commission was kind of based because it's an eight, eight o'clock BBC two thing. It was originally kind of going to be like saving lives at sea. So it was going to be sort of helmet cams that capture stuff uh, and we scatter them across West Yorkshire and then, and then cover it in master interviews. But, but like when from fairly stage, like myself and James and Mark and people, we all decided that we wanted to kind of make it more of a proper proper doc really and we wanted to kind of make it sit alongside your ambulances and your hospitals and stuff like that um, which obviously led to uh, challenges because we had to uh, make covid work um we had we had a couple of things that made it quite difficult we couldn't we couldn't um the the directors couldn't go in the back of the fire engines with them uh, we had to sort of travel in this kind of uh, clm kind of trail car that kind of followed behind so it made made the sort of logistics of it quite difficult and then when we're filming around stations and stuff, we had to put kind of quite strict kind of COVID protocols in place so that we we could actually deliver the series, but also did deliver it in a safe way. So it, it, it was kind of a, it was a bit of a fiddle at first, wasn't it? And we had to sort of mm. get those signed off by the, both the fire service and, and, and the channel and stuff. But mm. once we got on the ground, it was an absolute breeze, really. It was a dream and everybody was on a dream on the ground and making it work. And they always tried to make it work around sort of COVID and yeah, it was a really interesting process, though, doing it through a pandemic. <laughs> It'd be a lot yeah, easier say, second time. <laughs> you can't tell. that. I don't think that comes across that those challenges were given to you. I think you might have had to work in a different way, but what you see on screen, I mean, it looks absolutely awesome. It just looks, I mean, tell us a bit about the, you know, sort of how you filmed it, I suppose. I know a little bit about, you know, um, the technical side of things but you explain things you know how what was the shooting style and talk me through um you know how you made it visually how you made it look so amazing i mean the the big sort of challenge for us was the fact that uh covering fire scenes is very different to covering a, an ambulance scene or a police scene in that you can quite often turn up to something like the bradford fire that's in the first episode and you've got hundreds of firefighters scattered and 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 unlike medical and, and sort of policey stuff fire doesn't really play well with cameras and doesn't play well with kit so we ended up um uh having to use these sort of fire cams that stick on the side of the helmets that they, they can go up to sort of they're basically just sort of glorified gopros really but they they go up to sort of 300 degrees uh so they're kind of used to going into fire and stuff so we've had to sort of adapt uh, our sort of technical side of things to make it work we've we put radio mics on people in the back uh, that recorded internally so that if they went into a situation that we couldn't get to uh, it would get sound from everything really so we had to sort of think about things a little bit different to what we we normally would for sort of obstocky shows um we we shot on on fx9s and and sort of swanky prime lenses to, to try and make it feel and look a little different to anything else really we we, from an early stage, we we wanted to make it really distinct as a because you don't see the fire service very often, so we we kind of wanted to make it feel really distinct and everything from the sort of look of it and the music of it. We tried to just go make it sit in its own place, really, and people go, "We know that's firefighters," kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I think I think as well that that uh, the, the 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 kit that you Ben Ben from day one said to me said we've got to film it like with the this uh, this sort of fifty mil lens so it actually put a lot of pressure on you and Hannah really because there was no zoom there was no uh, and and as a result you get those amazing images of the fi the fire because it, it it can work in very low light really well can't it and and I we couldn't believe it when we were getting the uh, rushes into edit because. I'd, I'd just not seen stuff like that before and, and the editors were the same and the, the channel, you know, some of the imagery was almost like, felt like it was from a film at times, some of those big fires, which I think is testament to you guys, you know, because it was not easy to shoot that way, was it? You could have made life a lot easier for yourselves, but I think I think it was the right call in the end. <clears throat> so was it felt with the, not only the fires but also the the stuff in the in the in the sort of um, station, all that sort of ob, more ob docky style, which sometimes you know things are compromised and you'll see a slightly like lesser quality camera won't you and then it, it tends to feel you know it sits in the ob doc feel but with this you, you don't ever feel that you're kind of compromising on a different camera or 
or you're going back to that shaky, you mm -hmm. know, or whack the gain up and, you mm -hmm. know, you, it's quality. It looks, it looks fantastic. It's such a lovely watch as well because you've also got the brilliant characters. Yeah. Um, so do you want to talk a I little think, bit I think that's that? one of the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, I think that's one of the things. I think we were so lucky that we dropped upon, we, we, we ended up settling on six stations, uh, which are, have got sort of four watches on each station with 12 people uh so we ended up with sort of what's that pushing 100 people or something we ended up covering about um and we were so lucky that everybody was lovely and really on board with us and they just made the process so easy so if we ever needed anything they kind of made it work and we we um all of us kind of did the shifts with the fire service so we did sort of two days two nights with them and did the full sort of shift uh, which meant we ended up with us sleeping on some pretty grim floors <laughs> during the process. You think that helped um, to was, build the uh, trust? Do you think that that helped to build the trust so that they were like, they're in it with us? And that's how you maybe got that that kind of insight into those characters. And, you know, you really do see the real side of them, don't you? Yeah, I mean, the, the um, that was integral to it, really, because actually, you know, like any access, it's two layers of access, really. You've got your corporate level access which was agreed to the chief fire officer and the press team who were, were great you know they facilitated all our endless requests and all the consent stuff and all the you know all, all the logistical challenges of um compliance that i had to deal with with them and then the second layer is on an individual layer which is what ben and hannah and um and, and katie and natalie the, the ap's ha had which was that the firefighters trusted them and would open up to them about all sorts of issues mental health um growing up a uh, young asian man in huddersfield and what it meant to join the fire service you know um being away from your family being scared you know all these things that you perhaps don't often hear emergency service people talking about in these shows because it's often story led and obviously the incidents were important because they gave flesh you know to the the, the sort of skeletons that were you know of, of the characters because you saw them being heroes and saving people and you know do, do, doing their job but but what made it great was the times you spent with them at the station i would i would say because you got all those lovely moments and cooking having a laugh together you know even the stuff in the fire engines as well on the way to and from jobs ben and hannah were very good at making sure they you know you even produce to a, a degree those bits you know remind the guys what the job they've just done is talk about it and then they would go off and talk about amazing stuff wouldn't they and that was because they trusted you you know and 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 you got to know them you, you almost became friends really i think on many levels didn't you because you were with them for so long and i think um it's hard as well when it's a first series because you haven't got anything to fall back on say with ambulance and things you know the people that are filming on there you know you can see where that's going and and you know that trust is you know you can say look this this is the kind of quality that's good whereas with you guys you're probably kind of saying well yeah it's, it's new ground and like you say firefighters don't often you know we don't often see these sort of series do we and and, if, and this this is in a way is, is new ground so i suppose what have you learned um on this for you know that idea of gaining trust and insight you know that real kind of the roots of like documentary making and, and getting getting people to say things what did you learn from ben. i think um i think because because the sort of the medical and police background uh, sort of programs have been done to death and and people have people are quite conscious of how those kind of programs are made and things like that and nobody's really done firefighters before and uh, there's been a couple of programs last five ten years but not really and, and everything from sort of getting them to a position where they can consent people with us on the ground and and things like that it's it's, it's been sort of a learning experience from from start to finish really we th these kind of programs are often number games as well which when you look at ambulance they've got enough coverage to be able to get enough good story to be able to do it as the um as the nhs and things so we've had to sort of be build pad ass not pad but like build our stories and characters around these incidents so it, both both on a shooting level and on an editing level we've had to sort of be quite creative in the way that we sort of tell these stories and tell these characters yeah i mean and as well we learn quite early on and, and i think this is what has um caused issues for other firefighter series that 
they do go to fires and they do rescue people and they go to car a- a crashes and stuff but not all the time a lot of their job is has evolved and and particularly with covid and um with uh, other issues they help other emergency services a lot and in fact i think some of our best stories were what we call ambulance assist jobs where um the fire service are called to a house somewhere and and the the ambulance crew can't get in or they can't get somebody down the stairs or uh, and those are the real human level stories because because they are um doing their job but in a way that you wouldn't have anticipated they would do you know they get called to all sorts of incidents to help out the other services and often they get there first you know we did a there's an episode two, there's a, there's a crash on the M62 and they're there about 15 minutes before the first ambulance and they're doing all the primary care, they're getting people out. And, and actually um, that's increasingly their job, isn't it, Ben? Like they're just expected to, to have this cross section of skills. And I think they were really proud to show that off. And I know the service were delighted that that cliche of them just sitting around cooking stu- uh, big stews and playing pool and stuff, actually they're, they're usually pretty flat out actually but not on the jobs you'd anticipate you know not just fires and I suppose how um when you're trying to reflect that side of them and that that fires aren't the only thing that they attend and they've got lots of other aspects to their role how did how did the lockdown affect that idea did you really struggle to find those stories that they you know if you weren't filming in lockdown you would be able to have more stories to choose from so we kind of often thinking Oh, we do want to reflect this side of life, but actually no one's going out. Everyone's in their houses. So, yeah, getting access was hard, wasn't it, Ben, sometimes into homes? Yeah, very much so. And I, and I think the jobs, the type of jobs changed because people weren't going out and driving the cars and, and crashing. And there was a, a lot more sort of dealing with elderly people and, and things like that that are sort of isolated, which, which opens up another kind of set of stories, really, that is quite interesting. And I think if when we do the second series of it, I think it'll be a completely different feeling series just because I think now the world's opened back up. I think we're going to get a very, we'll end up getting the car crashes and the big fires and all that barbecues and all that kind of stuff that we didn't have that first time. Yeah, because the, the on the first series, it's sorry, the first episode, it's a bonfire night, isn't it? And and you get, and I don't know how the night panned out for you, but, but what we see on screen is um, a post box fire and, um, and a firework through it, a letterbox. Yeah. Um, and did, was that the reflection? Was it really quiet for them? It, it wasn't mega busy, was it? Um, the, but they they had um, they had stuff. It was just with the, the the watches we happened to be with what jobs they got. But actually, obviously, that firework through the letterbox was a good story in terms of you know vulnerable people, you know, feeling scared in their homes. And Sophie, this the watch commander, related to it really well I think you know and that worked for us for that but yeah I mean I don't know it, were they, what did they say was it compared to other years was it quieter I think it was pretty similar but I think the challenge for us was the fact that we've got we've got such a small little team really and we were trying to cover we, we covered sort of three stations but there's like 48 stations and, and there's a thousand firefighters scattered across West Yorkshire so covering it is it is incredibly difficult um and when you look at the sort of bigger budget shows they've got enough money to be able to scatter people a lot more than we have so we sort of covered it as well uh, as well as we possibly could really but um go on. so talk, do you want to talk a little bit about the team because um you know this this kind of series is is you know brilliant it's filmed in Yorkshire and you know for people who work in these regions it's you know it's the kind of it's the kind of thing people want to work on it's exciting it's documentary so you know what kind of what kind of team did you build and what sort of skills if people are looking you know if people want to work on these kind of shows what sh- what kind of skills should they have you know obviously you know shooting skills and storytelling and, and editorial strength but you know tell me about the team you built and what skills you were looking for um, so we, well, Mark and uh, Robinson, the creative director, you know, when we got what the commission, he, he was keen to work with people on this who knew the patch. Like once we knew it was West Yorkshire, we wanted people who could um, not ideally, you know, be born there, but, but actually know the area and it worked well for you. So we obviously got talking to Ben about it and, and, and he was a very good fit because of his background in other emergency service shows and, and, and frankly is creative vision for, for how he wanted to do it and then we we, we looked around for other 
um, shooting PDs who who had a a, a sort of base in the area, and uh, we found um, Hannah who'd just had a Blackwell who'd just come from. Um, I think she just just straight off hospital on on to us and had just spent a really difficult period through the worst of COVID in uh, central London hospital filming that fantastic um, series that they did last year right through the heart of the the pandemic with the you know the nurses in tears and everything incredible show and um, so she 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 was available and came up and and was happy with the the the, the kit and everything and and then uh, AP wise we 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 found. Um, uh, well, Natalie, who works with us at, at Wise Owl, was um, ready to sort of step up and be out on location a lot more and obviously knew the area. Uh, and, th and then Katie as well. So skill set wise, we, we the, the, the PDs, I'd say, from your side of things, Ben, it was about a combination of being very, very good with the kit on the on the hoof, effectively, because like Ben says, we weren't a huge team. We had a, a data wrangler, we had a, um, a researcher and then I, I ran the edit. Um, we had a couple of editors and, and, and then we had a, an edit producer for a bit, but basically on the ground, there was only the four of them plus, plus still the, um, uh, the Wrangler. So they had to be really good at multitasking because there's this, there's a skill set needed to both produce these tiny in the moment stories that last maybe five minutes and you've missed it. And then, and then you've got to consent the people as quick as you can and be you know keep the firefighters on side you've got to keep yourself safe so there's a lot of training we had to do we had all the kit and everything the helmets and all the coats and stuff you so still got them. Uh, we, we had to give them back, uh. <laughs> give them back. so so it's one of those jobs i mean like I, we i really wanted people who'd done emergency service stuff but also had a, a real documentary um sensibility as well in terms of producing because and um, we deliberately made sure ben and hannah sh directed their own pickup interviews because they had the relationship with the firefighters and we did the sort of the down the lens sort of interrogatron thing which you know is a bit of a staple of these programs but it works you know when you want the firefighters to be talking to you as a viewer and because we couldn't see their faces very often with the masks and the visors these were really important so you could look into the their eyes sort of thing and so Ben and Hannah did those chats as well because they were really important to give emotional depth to the stories so we kept it very tight and I think one thing the firefighters have all said was we we, we liked the fact it was the same two people and they were part of our watch a for Covid frankly because you don't want loads of people wandering around all the time and and b because they they knew that you guys wouldn't mess up basically on a big job and get in the way and cause a problem either with the public or with um uh, you know safety wise and i think that was really important wasn't it um i think i think um having such a small team as well having having people that are quite good at not just sort of seeing what's right in front of them but able to step back from the process and look at the bigger picture of things because quite often with these things you end up just shooting incidents and you'll just go shoot incidents but the reason Hannah's Hannah's so brilliant is that she's got a really really good sort of producer mind and, and she can think how can I sort of expand this story and how can I take the characters from the story and tell their stories and how can I use their master interviews to sort of compound them and make them better and I think I think that's a, a real sort of it comes with experience that, but it's a real sort of useful skill set that you can step back and she, both Hannah and myself sort of fed into James into his big super Excel document that had uh, all, his mind sort of splashed onto it. But we could sort of go, okay, well we can make this better, or we can we can move this about and and things, and just having an ability to step back and look at the bigger picture of the programs was a real real important skill, I think. Yeah, what one of the things we had to do is like when when an incident would come in and it would involve like one of the young firefighters, we'd be like, oh, brilliant, that's fantastic. Because now we can focus on her or his training journey. Because without like, there's a on the episode tomorrow, Simon is um, a young character at Dewsbury. He's brilliant and he's training to be a, a fire engine driver. And he Hannah did a great job. She got his story all the way through. You out on his training drives, you know the guys at the station winding him up, all of that, on him on a few jobs. And then the very last filming day, you, you get the story which ends that show. And it's just like, you couldn't, you know, it was a, it was a perfect end to the story. So you need those payoffs. And you you did the same, you know, with Lauren and like the, the, the training you followed. And it was quite tough that, wasn't it? Because you were, you're not wishing for jobs to come in. Of course you're not, you don't want ill, wish ill on people, but you do need, 
to get a bit lucky sometimes with your firefighters to attend big incidents like with the, the, the tire fire in Bradford it was fortunate in a way that some of our firefighters were there like Bo and the guys from Leeds because it wasn't on their patch but it was such a big incident that we knew them and we could latch onto their shoulders on the day and and they carried the story for us and that's what you always have to do you have to put a character into a story otherwise they're just another random face and that was what was probably the biggest challenge in the edit was moving those pieces around and creating themes like community or mental health or um you know learning from the older guys or how the fire service has changed or being a mother or whatever it was they had to like fit around the stories and the characters and that was definitely the hardest part of making this for me anyway yeah I was going to say that's quite interesting just quickly on both your sort of roles really in this so so so, so James sort of like beginning to plan the edit when you actually don't know what stories you're going to be included how you know was that the biggest challenge? Because you can plan to till your heart's consent and you can find those characters and get the access. But, you know, do the stories, are these stories getting shared? Are they, you know, are they captured on the ground and then shaped in the edit? Or are you just sort of hoping how much yeah. of this? Yeah, well, we, we, we sort of knew, like, because obviously the edit started whilst we were still filming. We started shooting at the beginning of November and we wrapped in uh, mid-Feb. And the edit started at the end of November. So I was already thinking, we started cutting stories, to be honest, first before we made episodes. Um, and because the only way, give, although these guys do shoot very, very concisely, <laughs> you're still turning 45, 50 minutes of rushes into a, a maybe an eight minute pull. And then you can make the story from that. And then you're starting to leave holes where you might need your master interviews. And you're thinking, oh, we could do the scene at the station to kick that off. So. I would start doing story cutting and then I was thinking, well, episode one's probably going to include bonfire night and the big tire fire because those are the first big things that happen and they're, the, they're very visual. And so we sort of knew that was our first step and we worked on that while still cutting stories that we think we can use elsewhere because the timeline narrative is quite important. Episode one is the only one which has a natural timeline. Actually, no, episode um, two does as well because it covers winter and Christmas, but the other shows are theme led. So there were stories from different parts of our schedule that all fitted together. And um, so it was very difficult initially to sort of see the wood for the trees because you were thinking, you know, I get a call from Ben going, oh, I just had a great job. Um, this, this and this has happened. And, and Sarah did a brilliant thing, you know, and I'm thinking, great, well, I'll, I'll get to that at some point, give it to the editor and he'll sort of pull it and make it look nice. And, and then eventually we started moving the pieces into position. And when the BBC were needing viewings of episodes and all of that, you know, the relationship we had with our commissioner, Diana Hare was, was brilliant. I mean, she was so great because she was collaborative and worked with me and Mark to make sure we got the shape of the episode right without putting really, because viewing schedules are really stressful on Obdoc because you're constantly needing more time because you're, you're waiting for the stories to land and the pickup interviews to be shot and then you're dropping those in and 58 minutes is such a long time as well it's like a film almost you know you're trying to make these shows flow so it was quite it was quite hard to shape it but i would say it was really the new year wasn't it ben before we actually had all four nailed down and you guys were absolutely aiming for particular scenes to fill those holes weren't you I think uh, from from our point of view on the ground, because we were such a small team, it's quite easy to kind of get sucked into sort of just shooting incidents and doing that. But we were, we were very conscious from from an early stage. When you look at all those sort of big old blue chip type programs, they, they give it a sense of scale and they, and they give the location a, a real feel. And we really wanted to sort of be able to step back and go, "This is Yorkshire. This is the best place on earth," kind of thing. Um, so so we we myself and Hannah worked really hard at sort of. Um, trying to sort of get those kind of really cute character moments while also really embed it in the location and make the location feel like a character in the program. And so um, for you, Ben, um, you know, the role of a series director in a, in a show like this, um, is it the idea of where you sort of, you're following the action, but how much are you directing the action as well? Um, and, you know, with an eye to sort of, you know, what's the difference in that, I suppose, is it for a, for a director? I mean, we set we set a fairly 
um, clear sort of style bible actually beforehand where we sort of said this is kind of exactly how we want it to look and how we want it to feel and we want to try and shoot with the lenses wide open and we want to do the bare basic things like shooting on the rule of thirds and things like that um, but we set quite a clear style thing because I think it's really important when you shoot when you've got multiple shooters on a program like this you need to have consistency really across your shooters you don't I've just done a hospital show with with five or six sort of uh, PDs flying about, and just making sure that everybody shoots a similar level so that it all it all comes together in the edit is really important. Um, as I said before, we, we tried to make it feel really distinct and look really distinct. So we, we shot on these lenses that are very sort of fast lenses, so that you, you could basically see in the dark really with the, with that camera and full frame full frame sensor and the and the um, lenses you, in the dark. It's amazing. It's like unbelievable so um yeah we set we set quite a clear style of of how we want to shoot it on the ground and and uh yeah that's it really i think i think both of you you like the dream team like amazing uh we are slowly running out of time but um but i suppose um you know most importantly have you had a wrap in the rec room are you gonna be are you gonna be Getting that bar open again and having a rap party. <laughs> they, 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 they kind of shut the bar. One of the fire stations still has a bar. Huddersfield does, and it's got a snooker table. But they use it as a training room now. And we've That'd got be a perfect place for your rap party. <laughs> Well, we should talk to him about that. We'll have to wait and see if we get series two, and then I think we'll be. Uh, we'll be we had a, um, a Zoom one, didn't we? We had a Zoom wrap party, but yeah, it, exactly. it don't it don't quite cut it a Zoom wrap party, does it? Now, now that the world's opening up, hopefully yeah, we can yeah. uh, we can all get together for a beer. Hopefully, well, they, 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 yeah. They, they, they're quite sociable, the firefighters, aren't they? They, they like to, when their shift patterns allow, they all they all like, like uh, tearing up leads, don't they? On this, yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so what what's next for you both? Um, or you, uh, you, uh, what would you say first, Ben? I'm, uh, I'm just doing a hospital show up in the northeast. I've just finished uh, shooting it, and, and now I'm heading to Cardiff to go try and crunch it together somehow. So uh, I've got to stop picking things that are in COVID times really difficult. So <laughs> I'll pick something nice and easy next time. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, I'm uh, doing a pilot for Channel Four, which we've, we've just got commissioned, which I, I can't say what it is yet but it's um a sort of property type thing we're doing um which we're going to be shooting in the in the autumn so hopefully that'll lead to a series oh so, awesome to, well, yeah. um everyone should go watch yorkshire firefighters on bbc2 it's brilliant it's a really good watch um and thanks for telling us all about it oh thank you for having us thanks for having us katie see you soon